Hello everyone, and welcome back to another cartography lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on map projections by talking again about this idea of developable surfaces and taking it a step further and describing why our choice of developable surface matters. And so what I've done here is I've taken and I've added to our previous diagram these red dots. And what I want you to think of these red dots representing is a light source. And so you can imagine that basically what I've done is I've taken our reference globe, which is this circle. You can think of this in three dimensions as a sphere. And I've added a little light source in the middle. That's what this red dot is. And what I want you to think about is what happens as the light radiates out from the light source through our reference globe onto the developable surface. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you sort of schematically here what I'm talking about, right? So the light, the light is coming out of our, it's coming out of our light source, right? It's hitting a point on the reference globe. And I'm going to try and put this in the same spot on all three reference globes, right? It's hitting the spot on the reference globe. It's going through the reference globe and it's hitting the developable surface. And where it hits the developable surface is where the is where this point on the reference globe is going to end up on our map, right? Because this developable surface, this piece of paper, this is going to be our map. And so we can do the same thing here with the conic case. Right? Again, shine the light through. It hits the point. It continues to shine through until it hits the developable surface, and that is where our point would be. Same thing with the conic, again, right, it shines through, hits, shines through, makes contact, and that's where our point would be. And so you can see here, just with this very simple singular point case, how the idea of developable surface is going to have a major impact on the way that our output looks. And so what I want to do here is I want to show you an extreme, not extreme, show you what this would look like in terms of the graticule, right? Our lines of latitude and longitude. So if we were to take this concept, right, the cylindrical concept, and apply it to the lines of latitude, all the lines of latitude and longitude, and cut it open cut it sort of along the edge and open it up so that it turns back into a square. All right, what we would get here, if we were to cut this open, would end up being something where the lines of latitude and longitude are parallel and perpendicular. So if I'll draw these in red, all right? We end up getting something that looks like this. Where our lines of latitude and longitude are now 90 degree angles. Right, this, oops, this is a 90 degree angle. Right, lines of latitude and longitude. run <clears throat> run parallel and perpendicular so you can you can see how you know in our reference globe right our north pole and our south pole were points right because the lines of the lines of the lines of longitude go something like this, right? And they converge right at points. But when we apply the cylindrical developable surface, right, we shine through, we end up pulling the north and south pole apart so that rather than being a single point, now the north and south pole are a line, 
right? This whole line here is the North Pole. This whole line here is the South Pole, when really they should be converging. So this it goes to show you how we can start to introduce distortion, which we're going to talk about later, based on just the choice of developable surface. So let's go ahead and think about what would happen in the case of our conic projection. So again, if we were to take these lines of latitude and longitude, project them through, and then cut it open, what we get with the conic projection, oops, we get with the conic projection, right? And again, I would encourage you to sort of experiment with this on your own with a piece of paper, right? Make that sort of, you know, elementary school party hat. And if you cut it open, what you end up with is something that looks like this. Right, you end up with an almost sort of Pac-Man looking projection as opposed to a square here where we have our lines of, in this particular case, right, our lines of longitude running out like a spider web or arc or wheel and our lines of latitude spinning around them in these sort of concentric circles. Right? So you can see here just the difference between a cylindrical and a conic, just the difference in the way the graticules look. And then finally we have planar, which again you can imagine now in this case we're going to end up projecting it out. With a planar projection, what we end up with is we end up similar to the conic projection, but instead of it being having this Pac-Man shape, we end up with a circle with the point of contact in the center, lines radiating out like that, and then again these concentric rings. So I know this is kind of difficult to visualize. I really encourage you to get out a piece of paper and a beach ball or something similar and just playing around with these concepts. Get a feel for how you can bend the paper so that it creates these different shapes. Play with them on top of a three-dimensional sphere and just see the kinds of things that you end up with. Really try and play with this because this is really an important concept. So hopefully that makes sense this idea that we have the different shapes impacting the way that the different in this case I just did the graticules but you could imagine how if you had say the outlines of the countries how the outlines of the countries would distort going from these different types of shapes so hopefully that makes sense and if you have any questions as always please reach out thank you